Hi, good afternoon. My name is Daniel Constable. I work for a state agency here in Sacramento, the Delta Stewardship Council. Um, however, I should note that we're participating kind of out of work for the most part. This is just a fun unofficial project um, to see what we can put together quickly. I'm participating with three other main team members, Ron Melser, Kate Anderson, and Corey Copeland. And then we had support and input from two other staff here, Megan Brooks and Scott Navarro. Um, our project was looking at water quality, and it's titled Water Quality in Aqua Regions. And Aqua stands for the Association of California Water Agencies. This project started out, um, as I'll explain, in a slightly different format. Um, and we've tried to kind of bring it to a, a certain stage, a uh, draft stage, but it's still very much a draft. I consider it more of a proof of concept. So first off, what we're doing here, um, we wanted to start out and see how to communicate water quality data in an accessible form. Um, the in initial part of this came out of discussions that we're looking at some data that comes out of a database called Cal EnviroStream, which has a number of variables. Um, but one of them is looking at water quality, and specifically the percentiles of populations in a given area that have access to what you broadly might consider acceptable drinking quality or do not. Um, when we started out, we wanted to do this as a communication tool so that if you lived in one of those communities, you could easily clear your address and see if you were um, in exceedance of a standard or not. And if you did have clean water quality, it would locate the closest community that does not um, and show you where they are. It's kind of an idea to build awareness and support um, for when you're sharing water quality with smaller agencies that may not have the resources to provide that or just uh, generally bringing up some of the challenges that have come about from financing. This also came about because earlier this year there were two different tax proposals that were looking at funding clean water. Um, a lot of that focused on agencies in the South San Joaquin Delta that may be very, very small and don't have the resources, um, economies of scale to provide that. Both of those failed. We thought at least we should uh, bring up some of the underlying challenges so people are aware of it. So what we did is we wanted to create a map um, this is a little bit more of the background that provided. This is coming from News Deeply, but it's from a water, uh, water board background of data as well. Um, this is the current map, and this is what we started with and the data set that we were thinking of using. Um, it's a water board data set coming from the Human Right to Water portal, and it's not to make fun of the portal or anything like that. That provides an enormous amount of clean, um, very valuable information. However, the map is somewhat difficult to use. It provides a number of points um, without looking into the data. You don't really know what things mean. Maybe stars are bad, they're red, so probably, but it doesn't actually explain that until you dig into the data. And so we thought we would try and make something that would communicate the data a little more clearly. So we wanted to come up with an online UI, something like a map, um, and ideally something that allowed you to download the data. Um, the other part of this, the part that was building awareness and support is that we wanted, once you found your community, that you could click on and find the agency contact that was responsible or might have some political leverage for that area um, that you could contact if you wanted to. Some of that information is online, some of it wasn't, um, and it could be hard to track down. So there wasn't a single place where you could get someone's phone number, email address, website, et cetera. Usually it was just a website. And so one of my colleagues went around and collected and compiled that data. Um, in the end, we redacted, took, took back the phone numbers because we didn't want to post that on the web, but the other parts would be post. And so what we did is we came up and built a, a really quick website using existing code from an open project um, based a bit on a, so a bootstrap theme, essentially. And the picture here is from the northern uh, Sacramento River, the far north, northern Sacramento. Um, we built a web app that allows some of these features to work, although, as you'll see in a second, we're not quite done. It's very much a draft still. Um, some of the features of the map here is that it has three layers. There's a zip code in Aqua region, so these are the zip code boundaries. Um, they're color, colored by the 10 Aqua regions. There's a Cal and Virostream uh, data set, which is actually this red to orange here, showing the drinking water quality the percentile, essentially where you are in that and then the water district um, boundaries. We were actually gonna do something with those boundaries, eventually looking at water supply, 
by and this or just visualization. You can perform a query based on an address or zip code here uh, using the built-in ArcGIS uh, geocode. And then there's just the, the general map interface. This is an example of what it looks like when you click on an area. So you can either search or just click on one, it will pull up a contact, tells you the region, the contact, who they are a little bit. And if you click on the more info link there, it'll bring you to their website. Um, and again, we redacted some information. This is an example of the Cal Enviro screen. So if you turn off the uh, overlying zip code layer, um, this layer shows, pops up and shows you the percentile. In this case, it's in the 99th percentile. Originally, these were going to be integrated so that if you clicked on one data set, it would pull up the pull up the other. It was all going to be in one master table. Um, we're not quite done with that part yet, though. Um, and then we added this at the very end. Um, this was also going to be a little more prominent, but for right now, it's in a separate window. Um, it's a way that you can show your location and then show you any community within a given distance. And it defaults to five miles to start with. The intent here was, again, going back to where we started out, that even if you're in a community that has clean water, we wanted a way that it showed what's around you. Maybe your neighboring community doesn't, and there'd be a way to show that. So some of the quick lessons learned. One, there's a lot of existing solutions out there. There's already a human um, right to water portal. After we started this, we found that some other projects in the past had attempted to do this. And then at the hackathon, I saw that there were, I think, five other teams that were also interested in water quality and taking very advanced approaches. So that was a little humbling, but also great to see that there's such interest in that. Um, maybe similar to that is that we saw there's a lot of data out there. It was more of a challenge to figure out how to work with it and put it into a usable platform um, rather than locate the data necessarily, although in a couple of cases we had to compile the data. Um, and although I guess I would say our solution is very simple, it was just something from a personal experience we're learning and we're trying to figure out how we can use uh, more advanced versions in the future. So some of the next steps, what we'd like to do, um, there's some design fixes we need to make to the site. We know about that. We wanted to make a way that you can automatically scrape data. So it updates this every year, or in the case of Cal Enviro Stream, when it's updated. Um, we wanted to add an improved geospatial query so that you can search based on your location and find the closest water district from not just a pure line of sight or as the crow flies distance, but actually query based on uh, water district boundaries and based on the underlying attributes, and then possibly add a, a multilingual option. That, that would be a bit of an extra. Um, this is some of the background. The code that's running the site is on GitHub. And then the project site is also being run off of the GitHub pages. Um, we made a new, a new account that hosts this data. There's a repository, which is just non-creatively named the Water Data Challenge. And then everything here is running the site. Um, background on kind of what was going on here. And if you go to the actual GitHub site, um, actually, sorry about that. Go to this. This is what it looks like. It has a little bit of background. You can either click here, go to the map, or click on the header nav bar to go down to that. Um, one thing that we wanted to fix and we didn't in time is to make this full screen. Um, it's actually being pulled in and limited by the container it's in, even if you set it to 100% width. But if you pull this up in another window, OK. So this is the GitHub site we created. Um, we created a new organization to host the data so it wasn't associated with just one person. Um, within that, there's a single repository. It was just for this project, um, the Water Data Challenge. Within that repository, actually, we can just go there. Um, there's the site that it's being run off of. And then if you go to that site, this is what it looks like. It has a little bit of background here. Um, it, again, this is just a concept. This is very much being worked on or will be in the future. You can either click on the map button here or from the navigation bar at the top, click on that, and it will bring you down to the map. As I had mentioned a minute ago, this section is not rendering quite how we want. We want it to be able to pull full screen, even if we push full screen here. It doesn't actually um, pull up. But if you open that in a new window, this is what it looks like. It has a few different layers, zip code and aqua region. It has the Cal and Virus screen data here by 
percentile. Um, and if you were to search for, say, your location, uh, let's use a zip code in this case, it will pull you to that area and you can pull up information about that. So in this case, the drinking water percentile is 26th percentile, which is quite good. Um, or if we want to know who's responsible for this region, we can pull that up here, either send them an email or go to their website and find out more about, about that person. Um, the other parts of the website, if we go down, um, this is the part that we weren't quite done integrating, but it has a table of water quality exceedances. We wanted this to dynamically update with the map and have them linked, but it's not quite working. But you can pull up um, we have a search box here. So if we search for, let's say, just a random place, it will start limiting it to the name of that water district, and then you can find where they are, the city, and where they are in compliance. This part still needs to be fixed up a little. And then at the very bottom, contact, and then where the code is on GitHub. So that's pretty much it. Again, for this project, it was really just a test and a learning experience for us. We're just doing it for fun, but really appreciate the opportunity to be involved and hope at some point in the future to maybe turn this into a useful tool that we can do more with. So I appreciate your time.